Hey there viewers, welcome back to another episode of Ray of All Trades. Today we have a curb find. A uh, Little Wonder vacuum came with the bag. It's a little bit wet because we had some rain. I did look at it just a little bit and uh, I'll show you what I, how we diagnosed this thing. I was waiting on a tool to come in to finish diagnosing it and making a video on it. Let's do some preliminaries real quick. It's got gas. Smells like gas. It has oil. Not over or under full, and it looks really clean. That definitely feels a little bit on the light side, compression wise. Um, Keep in mind, it's you're turning a, a big fan, so that fan's gonna uh, make the normal compression pop, pop, pop feel a little funny. I have pulled off the air filter already. I do want to verify that it has spark and look at it. Let's get the spark plug out. Appears to be a brand new plug. Let's see if we can both see what's going on here. Maybe about half throttle, something like that, just to make sure there's no kill switches in line. I see a spark from here. Hopefully you guys can see it. And I gotta tell you, the pull cord didn't feel much different without the plug in it than it did with the plug in it. Let's go ahead and give this thing a, a little shot of starting fluid just to see if it'll fire. Got my doubts, I really do. I talked to the guy this belonged to. He had said that he changed the oil and it was black as could be. He put new oil in it. it used to run really well. And then just all of a sudden stopped. He did say that the, that the pull cord feels a little different to him than it used to. And I can see that the normal items like spark plug, oil change, gas, things like that have already been done. Let's go with a little bit of uh, ether. Everything's normaled up. Yeah, it just really feels like low compression. I just wanted to go through the normal steps so you guys could see a normal sequence. All right, whenever you're doing a uh, compression test, you always, always have wide open throttle and you make sure that the choke is wide open, okay? So it needs as much air as possible to come through there. You give it some really good pulls and you're looking to see how fast it's climbing. So, uh, what, 15 pounds? <laughs> Not looking too good. Let's talk really quickly about uh, how four cycle motors operate, right? It's got uh, two full revolutions, like one complete burn cycle. When the piston is moving down, the intake valve opens, allows all the fuel and everything else to come in. When the piston reaches the bottom, the intake valve closes. The piston starts to travel back up, therefore compressing the air fuel mixture. Um, a compressed gas and air fuel mixture is a lot easier to ignite. Theoretically, once it reaches the top of that next cycle, the spark plug will ignite. Truthfully, it ignites just before top dead center, which is where you see B, TDC, and TDC, top dead center, before top dead center. When it reaches the top, it's fully compressed stroke, the spark plug fires, and ignites the mixture. 
and starts its way back down. Um, I'm sorry, that last one was called compression stroke. Um, it fires, starts pushing that piston back down, that explosion causing the piston to force down. That's called your power stroke, okay? It's expanding, it's pushing that piston down. That's the power stroke. When it reaches the bottom of this cycle, the exhaust valve opens, the piston is carried back back forward by another piston or just the a momentum from a flywheel is pushed back up and it when that exhaust valve opens it allows all of those burnt gases to escape once it reaches the top that valve will close intake valve opens and it starts that process all over again the thing is when you're checking for um, this next cycle or this next sequence that I'm talking getting ready to talk about which is a, um, a leak down test we don't want to be testing where the exhaust valve and the intake valve are opening, which is at the very beginning of the stroke, but we, we don't want to be testing on the top two where the valves are open. We want to be testing on that compression stroke when that spark plug was going to fire, when everything else is sealed. That's where we want to be testing for us to get a good um, leak down test. We have to have the valves closed. We have to have the piston at the very top so it won't roll over. That's where we want to do this next part of this test. So. Let me show you what we're getting ready to do. Gain access to this flywheel so I can turn it back and forth. Let me go ahead and get these bolts out so I can do that. So this is direct connection to this motor. I can use this to determine my top dead center mark. Now what I don't know, because I'm not looking at the flywheel itself because it's hidden, I don't know if I actually have top dead center. Um, anyway, what we're gonna do, we're gonna hook up a cylinder leakage tester. Just bought on uh, Facebox Marketplace. Haven't tried it once yet so not crazy about the o-ring on the end of that tool um, like I said it's used I'm just checking it out for the first time right now plug in your cylinder here we're gonna plug in uh, um, supply here and I think I want to turn it uh, down a little bit. Just we're going to start off low and try to increase it slowly. All right, so at top dead center, I'm showing, um, uh, it looks like I'm putting 50 pounds of pressure in. I've got 100% leakage. And I can tell you right now that I hear all the air coming out of this exhaust. This is zero degrees or 360, same, right? Um, then this, as soon as it reaches all the way back, so we want to feel for a top dead center somewhere in this ballpark. And all I'm doing is feeling for the sweet spot when the piston starts to move down right there, starts to move down right there. I want to be somewhere right about here in the middle. If you're slightly off, what will happen is you'll inject air. If it's not at the top, if it's on this side of it or that side of it, the air will actually push that cylinder down. Okay. Hopefully when I go to inject air, that won't move. I've got uh, a whole lot of air coming through here. 100% leakage. I'm putting in 35 pounds. And I'm hearing it all come out the intake. Yeah. 
Yep. And it doesn't matter where I'm at on this sequence. Now I hear it on the exhaust valve. And that's back to the intake valve again. So realistically, I shouldn't be able to move this by hand because I should have 90 pounds of pressure fighting against me. And I mean, I feel a little bit of drag, but anyway, I go straight from intake leak to exhaust leak. No matter where I'm at on here, I have basically all my air going out, um, leaking past. And uh, yeah, even on the old school, which by the way, old school, we would take a uh, compression hose, right? One of the quick connect compression hoses, and you just pull out the Schrader valve out the end and you can do this exact same thing. You can just inject air directly into that cylinder, as long as you're at top dead center, and you used to listen for where it uh, came out at, right? You used to just listen, you know, was it coming out the carburetor? Was it coming out the tailpipe? Um, was it coming out the crankcase? Take the cap off, listen for it coming out the crankcase. It told you rings, intake valve, exhaust valve. And if it came out the rings, at that point, you would add a little bit of oil to that cylinder, a very little bit of that oil into that cylinder, do the exact same test and see if you had the same um, compression reading and see if you had the same um, uh, answer from the leak down test, right? So that was what we called a leak down test. Now they've come out with, uh, gauges to be able to do the exact same thing that we used to do you know by the cheap way by ear i know for a fact that i'm pulling the head off of this and pretty likely i'll be pulling the uh, uh rings out of this thing right now since everything is pointing to intake valve leak i'm going to go ahead and start taking the head off but i may circle back and end up pulling the entire motor off basically pull off the fan pull the whole motor off and put it on the bench but just for giggles let's go ahead and attack the uh, uh intake first or excuse me the uh, the head gasket first and see if we actually have a uh, blown head gasket i have already checked the valves uh, on this before i even pulled it in here because um, i thought for sure that that was my original problem so that's just basically pull off the valve cover um, adjust so that one valve is down and i would look for 0 0.04 uh, thousandths um, 0.04 on my uh, gauge which is uh, 40 thousandths right 0.004 sorry four thousandths um i look for uh, four thousandths of a gap on uh, that between the rocker and the valve and then alternate so when that one's down check this one so i already did that before i came in here i know what i want to do i want to go ahead and try to attack this uh this head and see why i have a constant intake leak all right let's see if you and i can work in the same spot at the same time i pulled the uh, top shroud off of this thing so you guys can see the motor a little bit better so it's not necessary to do it if you don't want to. So let's get the uh, carburetor pulled off. Two eight millimeters right here. Go ahead and pull it out of the... Let's get the two 10 millimeters holding the carburetor on. So if you want to pull the carburetor completely off, just pull off this uh, governor rod um, and the spring. Heat shroud off the top of the muffler is going to be uh, four quarters and one ten mil. We need to pull off the uh, recoil cover so that we can get this uh, shroud loose. It looks like to get to the rest of the bolts, we've got to take this plastic cover off of here. It's just an eight mil, eight mil bolt on this side. One on the front here. Right, so that was, uh, so is that just three bolts? Looks like the fuel shut off valve needs to be in the shut off position to get that off of there. And let's take one more screw, one more bolt for the, starter all right doesn't have to go all the way out the way because remember all we're trying to do is get to this part right here so we've got a seven mil back in here back behind here that you can't really get to um so seven mil or likely quarter inch if i can sneak that out of there without having to pull off the entire motor to get to it i would be much happier so we're going to try
There we go. Seven mil fits it. Let's see if we can get the muffler off without causing too much damage. I'm glad we're taking this head off of here because that's a lot of crap drop, dropping down inside there. <laughs> People who are wondering, basically what you do is um, you turn the motor till that, like that valve is compressed, adjust this one for four thousandths, turn it around until So that one's compressed. Adjust this one for four thousandths. I did. I can tell you that those are working. All right, so let's go with one down here. Keep in mind when you pull this out, those uh, rocker arms, excuse me, push rods, the push rods come out. So it means you're going to have to adjust your valves when you put it back together. So, I mean, there's some dirt and stuff in here. This is your intake valve, your exhaust valve. Intake valve is always bigger than your exhaust valve. Um, the most common problem would have been a blown head gasket. Oof, that cylinder wall is scored pretty good. Anyway, let's just get some of this out of here so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, I'll try to do my best to show you guys. Basically, this cylinder wall is just destroyed. Hope y'all hope y'all can see that. Um, oddly enough, it looks like this. Uh, yeah, it is. So this is aluminum, and it must have got hot as can be because that cylinder wall is just destroyed. There is nothing, uh, nothing left of it. I don't know if y'all can see it. I'm trying. Yeah, there's no way even a set of rings would have done anything for this. I'm just kind of curious why it was leaking past the intake constantly. You know, uh, why, I was, why I was hearing an intake leak more than anything else. So I would have thought that I would have heard it coming through a uh, crankcase more than the intake. But yeah, this is a non-starter. You know, non uh, this, this cylinder can't be, can't be saved. So it's got pieces missing out of out of it. The little part of me is wondering why I had an intake leak. I mean, even though we've already condemned the motor, I'd like to know why we why we actually saw it as an intake leak. Why we had so much coming out of that valve. Obvious that I've got a whole lot of trash inside there, and these pieces of aluminum very likely could have been stuck there. But I would expect, my, my thing is, I would expect that valve, well, yeah, there's a ton of dirt in there right now. So that's probably, when we were doing our test, some of this dirt was likely in there. I'm not willing to put a, uh, <laughs> a head gasket on it just to, prove, <laughs> just to prove that there was some dirt inside the, uh, underneath this valve when I'm going to condemn the motor anyway because I can't fix that, uh, the block. But yeah, there's a whole lot of dirt in there it's easy any of that could have been holding that valve open uh, when we were doing our test but right now it looks like it's seating pretty decent but yeah it was just curiosity that was getting to me so uh, looks like we are looking for a uh, short block for this we'll see what we can come up with so I so I am going to be pulling off the flywheel so I can measure the the output shaft of this 
because um, it's very unlikely you'll find the exact motor. Let me get the output, uh, get the, uh, the fan off of here so I can measure that output shaft. The, what holds it to it, that's pretty universal, but the uh, output shaft can vary greatly. I'm not even gonna bother putting this back together until we have a motor. Okay, the way this works is there's another set of threads in here that are larger than what the bolt is that I just took out. Anyway, you find a bolt that's that size, drive it in, it'll push against the taper, or excuse me, against the flywheel there, and it'll pull this off. So it's gonna take me a little while to find or um, purchase, or I don't even know if I can make one of those. Something to get this off of here. I am gonna be scrapping the motor so I can use a, um, you know, a sawzall or something like that and cut the motor off the back and then heat it up and drive it out. I can do that, but I'd rather do it the right way. Y'all stand by, I'll come back as soon as I have something. So it took a little while trying to find a replacement motor for this thing, but I think I finally scored one. Little Honda 9 horsepower GX series 270. Complete motor, needs a little bit of cleanup. Hopefully that pump when it comes off of there yields a uh, straight shaft on the outside of that motor hopefully it's not a tapered shaft so let's get that off of there and see if we can make this thing bolt up I'm hoping that I can just pull these four bolts and pull that pump straight off. A lot of times they'll come off that way. It's like a one inch shaft by two point eight five eight, a little over two and three quarter inches to that shoulder. The motor is definitely taller than the last one. I'm either, I'm either gonna raise um, the fan shroud up or I'm going to lower um, this metal down. And I'm not sure which one I wanna do yet. I need to see how raising this up will affect the other rest of the gear that goes to it. Otherwise, I'm kinda liking the motor Fairly confident I can get that to work. I'm gonna do some measurements and I'll get right back with you guys. Okay, so this is where I'm at. Um, I went ahead and separated the base from the blower shroud. And everything I looked at, the easiest solution would be to reuse what I have, center the motor on that shroud, and then I can lower the metal housing uh, using this axle. So, Basically just drill new holes if I needed to align for height. Got the motor sitting up on the bench. I did uh, measure the old blower um, shroud is a one inch straight shaft coming through. It was hard to tell because there was a nut that was welded to it. So I went ahead and cut the nut off of it and it's one inch on both sides. Um, so to get a motor that has a, enough horsepower with one inch on uh, uh, you know one inch straight shaft it's going to take a little bit of effort so the gas tank's not as easy to move as i thought 
So I am going to have to probably either um, bend into here or uh, modify that blower uh, housing assembly a little bit. Like uh, smash it in and then possibly weld it so no air comes through. And I just need to get those bolt holes there to line up with the blower shroud so it's all in the center. And then we'll make adjustments from there. Easiest solution is find the exact same motor and um, put it on. That exact same motor was about $800. A used um, Honda motor um, in this running condition was uh, between $150 and $200. Bucks. I think this is going to be, even though it's going to take a little bit of more, little bit more effort, I think it's a cost-effective solution to do exactly what we want to do here. So a little bit of fabrication, a little bit of time, and uh, we'll have a machine that's probably ready to last for a while. Now let's see real quick. I think about a three and a half inch on center. Three and a half inch on center. The old one was a two and a half on center. So let's make a template. A template that it measures at least five inch by five inch. Measure out all of our holes and uh, transfer those measurements onto this assembly. Right, just take that, transfer this over here. Could have just gone straight to there, but I I just want to make a, a better template. Let's drop that on there, 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 one there. Let's just double check our measurements real quick. All right, let's go ahead and get a uh, center knocked out of this thing. Got a good template for this side. Found the center. Let's go ahead and get this thing. All right, I took the, uh, I don't know if y'all saw, I took the compass and I just found the center by drawing diagonal lines made a circle i plan on eyeballing that part of it and then seeing if my dots line up on my crosshairs here if i can get all of the crosshairs to line up that should be pretty close and i drew the uh, center of that hole i tried to line up my dots that matched up with these dots. And then you look, it should be pretty accurate. I'm going to measure from edge to hole, edge to hole, edge to hole, just like that, just to verify. Because uh, I'm just trying to keep it as center as possible. I know it's not that critical, but I'd like to get it close as possible. This is going to take a minute, and it looks like I'm slightly off on that one. I'll bring you guys back as soon as I have it cleaned up. Uh, I drilled the holes. Those are ready to go because I didn't have these bolts. I had to special order those bolts. Let's go ahead and get this motor prepped while we're waiting for those bolts to arrive tomorrow. It's a 
12 it is. 12 millimeter. Get the oil changed. Well, it didn't look too bad. We're gonna change it anyway because we don't know what it was and who did it last. It says it holds uh, 1.16 quarts. So I've got a little more than a quart here, 10W30. I'm gonna say I gave it more than she needed because she's trying to run out. So the first time I checked it, it was uh, all the way up to the edge. Um, this time I added exactly what it said to add by this book and it still looked like it was a little bit too full. So we're, I don't wanna underfill it. We're gonna do this with it and see if, if we start having a bunch of smoke and whatnot. So I noticed that there's recoil didn't always want to grab sometimes I was having to pull it way out just to try to get it to go so let's get this off of here and see if the spring is worn out or if it just needs to be rewound or just cleaned I love this little flip socket I'll try to remember to put this in the description it's a uh, flip socket with a magnet. It's eight millimeter on one side, 10 millimeter on the other, and it has a magnet built into it. So it'll hold whatever you're trying to pull off. And the two most common sizes I use are eight and 10. So I love that thing. I, I picked it up, uh, I ordered it because of another YouTuber that subscribed or recommended it. And no kidding, they, it was definitely worth it. So it looks like the dogs are pulling out okay. It does feel like it's a, uh, it's either dirty or the spring has uh, come loose inside there. Let's pull this 8mm out. I might be ordering a spring for this thing. So this first. There's the spring. She doesn't look too terrible. I wonder if it's just dirty. Because that should have uh, sprung out a little bit more than that. I shouldn't have had to touch it for that to occur. Let's just clean this out and then get some fresh grease in it. Get a lot out of there. So we're going to use two different types of grease on this thing. One of them is a uh, non-fluid oil. Um, this is what I've been putting in when I rebuild a drill and stuff like that. Right. So that should be able to coat the bottom side here that the spring rides on. I'm just smearing a little bit extra in there so that uh, it works its way around. It's hardly enough of that. And then I'm going to take and also add some penetrating oil, or in this case it's WD-40. just to give it a really quick lubrication as well. This will help clean it out and provide some lubrication at the same time. All right, this should be able to grab that arm right there. Don't worry about the rope right now. So we're gonna wind that up here in a second. 
want to make sure that it seats down and grabs that spring. It feels like I did. Now let's make sure that these have plenty of lubrication as well. I have anything left here? And then uh, let's put some of that other grease on here. That looks like it's kind of gummed up. Yep. Ring went down inside there. Put it down where you can see it. I ended up having to just push it until I found the groove that it lined up with. So let's make sure that the yep, yeah, make sure the dogs come out like they're supposed to and then retract like they're supposed to. Yeah, they're definitely coming out a lot further than they used to. Before I took it apart, those dogs barely came out just a just a little bit. Let's reach down here with a pick rope out all I want to do is go in the direction of the spring I'm just gonna wind it up once more because if you see I don't have much um, tension on it right so I want to add just one more revolution so all I'm gonna do is hold that rope out get it right past all of those give it one more revolution make sure it goes all the way out quicker get grab to the uh, for the rope earlier today when I was pulling that rope I had it out about four feet before it would grab the previous owner did say that if you wanted to run this you're gonna have to uh, replace the carburetor so let's see if we can get this thing rebuilt I noticed that the fuel line is cracked really bad so we're gonna change the fuel line it's also rubbing on the governor rod so I don't like that either just get the carburetor off of it and see what we're dealing with Somebody gave this thing some love. I see a brand new NGK plug in it. The oil change, or the oil looks fairly fresh, and I see a brand new uh, air filter. Let's take those pieces off. The tank's empty and it really doesn't have any uh, smell to it, so I think it might be okay. Fuel on and off. Man, that fuel line's has a bad shape. I'll be very surprised if this filter um, isn't full of these hose pieces in here. I don't know if y'all can see that, but man, that thing's all cracked up. Wow, it's fairly tight. having to buy a carburetor just for the gaskets and the rebuild kit because I am not liking the way this is trying to come off either. That was a lot of effort for a carburetor. So let's pull off the spring, turn the throttle and pull up the governor rod. I think what was stuck was uh, that corrosion right there. And then that gasket's definitely seen better days. And the carburetor's looking a little bit rough. Right, let's get this thing apart and see what we've got. I'd like to use an impact on it just to hit that, knock that loose, but. Oh. All right. Inside there doesn't look terrible. Um, Neil pulled out pretty easy. And that's fairly clean. I mean, I'm just 
just seeing some dirty passages, but all in all, it's not that bad. Let's see what the filter looks like. Oh, it's got some dirt in there. Um, this is a uh, this is acting as a sediment bowl. Is all that thing's doing. Chokes working like it's supposed to. The throttle is moving freely. It might be a little bit loose. Uh, my concern is that I might have an air leak in here because of how easy this is moving. We might have to pull up that uh, screw and see about see if there's a bushing inside there that's replaceable. And then under here is your pilot jet. Normally this would be your idle set screw. So on a lot of engines that uh, you just want it wide open throttle it doesn't really matter but uh, when you've got one that you can adjust the throttle on like this one just take a peek and see what roughly what it's set at so you can get back to the same ballpark on a generator it's not going to matter because it always wants to run wide open throttle or governed at you know 3600 or 3000 rpms depends on the motor right, let's pull that up and then underneath here is your pilot jet. And a dirty pilot jet will cause surging. Making a surging noise. I am really concerned about how loose that is. So it looks like there is a seal. I see a snap ring right there. So there's no seal there, it's just the machining. There is some sort of a seal right here. What do we got here? Yeah, I think honestly that this and then this seal probably had a little bit left to be desired there's a lot of play there and then whatever this was this fabric looking filter stuff um, definitely wasn't sealing up so here's my concern you've got metered air so your your emulsion tube down inside here is um, using a venturi effect and when the air passes through from the choke side out here through here through this throttle plate the um, the quantity of air is metered by the size of the hole of this emulsion tube so fuel gets pulled up and sent in and then it's trying to reach a 14.7 to 1 I believe for optimum um, what we've what we've done here though is we've allowed air because of a uh, loose throttle shaft it's allowing extra air to be sucked in past this throttle plate and it's going to change the mixture here just a little bit. It would be the same as having an intake leak, like this gasket being torn. It would be the same as that because it's past this emulsion tube right here. So it would be running too much air, not enough fuel. We call that lean. So lean is going to cause it to re uh, run hotter and rev faster. Uh, shortens the life of the motor. Just the simple fact that that is worn out or... Um, I don't know if the rebuild kit would even have this. I'm, what I was planning on doing is just cleaning this out and putting it back together. I think to be on the safe side, I'm just gonna go ahead and buy an aftermarket. And if the aftermarket one is, is made out of junk, I can potentially use the new seals that come with it um, or find an aftermarket rebuild kit for this. Tell you what, let me try to get some parts ordered because I'm waiting on the bolts anyhow. I'll get back with you guys. Um, we're gonna need parts to bolt that uh, shroud on. I already have a fuel line in stock. I'll meet up with y'all soon. All right, got a couple of parts in. I had to order some uh, special bolts for the motor. 
um, 5 16 by 24 pitch, one inch. Uh, three quarter looked just a little bit too short with the uh, lock washer and stuff on there. So I ordered the one inch. Got a 10 pack, fairly cheap. Uh, grade eight. I know looking at the uh, markings on the top, uh, you got six lines on there. Um, it says KEF. Anyway, those those six lines on top mean something. I don't know if it's grade five or grade eight, but anyway, it's a lot stronger than just what you'd get at a normal big box store. So just know if you're doing anything with a motor, I recommend a trunk bolt. So I ordered a uh, kit from the uh, jungle store. Came with some new gaskets and. I don't know if y'all noticed, I when I was taking apart that other carburetor, a, um, a lock ring flew off of it. And um, so I was, I was worried about a few different things, like how was I going to seal that up? And honestly, that's got less play in it. Um, so we're going to try to put this aftermarket carburetor on here. You know, it's completely clean, completely set up. It's designed for this motor. It has a uh, fuel shutoff valve on it. Um, I noticed what it doesn't have is that sediment bowl on the side. I don't anticipate that being a problem, but I kind of wanted to see what the differences were between them. All the rest of it looks the same. It has that screw there for the pull that same, you know, throttle shaft out. It moves okay. It doesn't have any play like the other one did. So I was going to need to either make a gasket. I was going to need to find that ring. I was going to have to find a way to seal this. I ended up getting the whole uh, kit for... It was under 20 bucks for the whole thing. I forget what it was. Already scraped off that gasket. Looks like it goes on just like that. That lines up um, this side right here. Throttles on that side. Should be able to start sliding this together. And then vibration spring. This gasket goes next. This is going to end up on here like that to control the choke. So it fuels in the on position. So mm, it actually looks like it should go underneath that uh, governor leakage. There we go. Time for my vampires to save the day again. I love these pliers. I'll try to remember to link them in the description. I'm not sponsored by them, but man, these things are fantastic. Yeah, those van pliers. Love these things. Up under there. Looks like it's not in the way of the governor connection and yeah, I can see something like that I just, have to just check everything make sure it's all still free yeah fuel lines not even touching the governor rod So this throttle connection right here, right here, um, we're going to be hooking up a cable. So most likely I'm going to end up using this screw to mount the cable and it's going to connect into that right there. So, and then you'll have remote control over your throttle, which I'm just moving this arm right now. So that's how those, that's how those Honda motors are set. Bolts that added special order, like I said, they're going to go right here. It's a uh, 5 16 or probably 8 millimeter, but it has a 24 uh, thread per inch count. Wasn't anything I had, and it was actually a little bit tough to find. It actually sits pretty good. Alright, I'm going to back those out, and I'm going to put some blue Loctite on them. Now that I know it's going to seat in there like it should, and just a little bit quicker. <laughs> so 
So I put a uh, block under the back to keep it from rolling, and I've got a floor jack under the front, a bottle jack, just to keep it uh, horizontal so I can set the front on there. Bolt holes right here that are supposed to line up with the motor. We're going to try to make this match up the best possible. I want to try to center uh, this amongst those two holes. Let's see if I can scrape the paint. Looks like one hole is centered about right there. One of them centered about right there. One of them centered about right there. And one of them centered about right there. And three and a half apart there. Those are three and a half apart. So back here we are looking at seven and a half. So I'm gonna drill these mounting holes. Be right back with you guys. So on this flywheel, that shaft, this is a shaft off the old motor, the crankshaft off the old motor, and I ended up having to drill it with a half inch drill bit, and then I had to use a cutting torch once I had a hole, and use a cutting torch to try to get you know as much of this off of there as I could. It finally took it off, but I'm telling you right now, I had to beat and beat and beat on that thing um, to get it off of there. I ended up having to cut the nut that was attached on the outside of here off, Let's see if this slides on fairly easy and we don't have any problems before getting too far because uh, I am going to have to weld that nut that I cut off of here back on. Let me get some emery cloth and clean up the inside of this and then like I said we're going to weld this nut back on. Before anybody says anything do not claim to be a welder. All I want to do is just make metal stick. And I'm sure that that metal is going to stick. So that nut that I just welded on, it has two purposes. One of them it is the pulling nut that yes, I did try to use to take it off originally. It was stuck um, and it actually run my puller. And then the other thing is it is a a spacer flange I guess you want to call it so that when the bolt that holds this on seats in there it actually has a uh, something to press against right now this is still a little bit warm and I'm hoping to capitalize on it being warm I went back and watched the video. I'm wondering how many of y'all are screaming at the screen telling me I put it on wrong. Um, I even had words facing up and I still missed it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's just, that was funny. I went back and saw it. Um, I had to use a slide hammer and everything to pull it back apart, rotate it all, and uh, <laughs> yeah, you, sometimes you just have to laugh, right? I cut part of the, the crankshaft off because it was sticking out a little bit too far. So I shaved off about an eighth of an inch of the uh, crankshaft. The bolt uh, that you um, use to pull with, you know, it's a puller, right? So it's welded on the end, but it's also my mating surface for the, uh, the bolt for this side. I shaved that back so that the inch and a half crankshaft bolt that I bought from um, Advanced Auto Parts, I think, would have enough bite on it. Sometimes all you can do is just laugh because it's better than uh, getting mad about it. There we go. That got it. Let's get a little 
little mallet and just give it a love tap. Just a little weighted uh, weighted rubber mallet, at least on the side I was hitting with. The other side has a metal face to it. The Loctite, flat washer, lock washer, and the bolt. All right, just tighten it on down until that uh, Lock washer's flat, and it's about as tight as what a uh, car lug would be, you know, 90 pounds, something like that. Probably not even that much. I bet you it's probably uh, an 80 pound. You gotta understand, this thing's been in pieces in my garage for probably four or five months while I was trying to find a used motor for this thing. And I forgot all about uh, how it came apart. And my confidence factor said, oh, no, no, you got this. All right, now that that's buckled, I need to uh, uh, make sure that this is level the way I want it to be level. And then uh, we need to drill a couple of holes because the original holes are about right here. Because I had to move the motor, it's now here. So I'm gonna use these. These are pinching in to help hold that, support that. Got the bolts on the handle. Uh, we want to verify the uh, throttle cable, so that would be all the way slow, that would be all the way fast. So let's figure out how to get that adopted, adapted. So the cable already has a bend on it, a Z bend on it. If not, you could uh, heat it up and bend it as necessary. So there is a cable hold down right here. Let's loosen that up usually has a tooth on one side to hold it in place and then our throttle is this part right here right so a wide open throttle would be right there let's drop that cable into one of those holes seems like it need, I need to have a little bit more push to it because it didn't quite do all the way for me using the cable because we want the most important part is to have capability of going wide open throttle Small engines want to run at wide open throttle. They were designed, and it depends on the engine, some were designed to run at 3600, some were designed to run at 3000 RPMs. I'm gonna lubricate this a little bit. I think that some of this is my drag. As I can see, just barely touching it works. Let's get a little bit on that screw there too, as well. Work it back and forth. cable that was on here was sticking really bad that was part of my problem so this one actually moved really easy this throttle moves very easy now too as well so let's go ahead and put the cable in this one let's put it in the one that's furthest away let's put our clamp on let's just snug that up for now till we're sure 
That's much better. Looks like it goes like that. When I changed this cable out, I, I found a, a shorter one that I had, and I kind of like this one better. I think we're going to zip tie it right there. We're going to have to uh, probably put some labels on here as to, uh, you know, like fuel on, choke on, what, what have you. We get some, uh, I'm going to check you out one more time, get this gasoline topped off, and then let's give this thing a try. Put the bag back on. Yeah, Little Wonder makes a really nice product. So let's see, choke uh, is that way. So, so that's choke, that's run. And then the gas on position is back this way. So that should be gas off, that should be gas on. And then like I said, when I started, it's gonna go there to run. I wanna to try to start it at half throttle just to see what it does. So let me give it a couple pulls. I'm sorry, gas on is that direction. Choke was this direction. I just discovered that uh, my car was backwards. So I was testing my car and my car was actually Okay, the uh, RPMs were just a little bit too high for my liking. By ear, it sounded like it was, uh, or by the tachometer, it was about 3,800. It sounded really good at about 3,300. I'm going to let this do uh, cool down, come back and go do a cold start, try to suck up some yard debris and see if it works just fine. There she is, Little Wonder repowered with a Honda motor. Starts, runs pretty good. Heavy machine, <laughs> other than the uh, rabbit and turtle being backwards on the throttle control. Seems to do pretty good. If you guys got some other video, really appreciate a thumbs up or a subscribe. Helps the channel tremendously. I'll catch you guys on the next one.